Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be taking a look at the PvP side of things in Diablo 4. You can see how strong the rogue is in Diablo 4's PvP, however about every class has a fighting chance. And I will say there's a lot of reasons as to why you guys should be trying out PvP in Diablo 4. If you don't hate PvP, it's definitely worth going into the Fields of Hatred. As you can see here, this build is a fully PvE functional build, and it's still dominating in the PvP realm. And I think that's something that a lot of people want to take advantage of now, as later on, a lot of people will be specking specifically for PvP, and it'll be much harder to kill people. Right now, you are probably going to want to pull back your difficulty level. So let's say you're 65, and you can do Torment difficulty already. Pull it back to Torment 3, or the difficulty 3, I should say, Nightmare, because that is going to give you much more fair matchups. You have to remember, it is going to be a lot of people pushing in these zones at a higher level, like 65, 66 to 70, just because they want to make sure they have easy kills and they can blast through some of this content for easy levels. So for example, I'm 64 right now, but I'm going to actually go into the Nightmare difficulty because again, I am going to get matchups between probably 60 to 65 to even 70 in the Torment 3, or sorry, I keep saying Torment 3, I'm used to Diablo 3, but the third difficulty Nightmare. It's gonna give us better matchups and we're not gonna be playing at 70s, 80s, and above that range. And you have to remember as well, in the Fields of Hatred, you have slow cooldown on your potions. So if you use your potions a lot to stay alive in the top difficulty, well, you're not going to be able to do that here. So that's another reason I specifically have to stay in difficulty three as I continue to build up my damage reduction as I have pretty bad gear when it comes to damage reduction at the moment. But I want to show you guys real quickly how this works. So I know a lot of you guys have already been in here, but if you have not, this guy right here, the Seething Abomination, is a boss that's really easy to kill if you are a little over leveled, as well as these altars of extraction. It'll show you when somebody starts these altars, and you can go there and try to take them out before they cash in all of their shards. So the first thing you're going to see here if we hit our inventory is the red dust, or the PvP uh, the PvP currency really so I have 41,000 right now and let's take a look at what you can all get with it I know a lot of people don't know exactly what you can all do with PvP currency quite yet So the first thing you can see here is unsavory oddities You can see that you can actually buy a cap a tunic gloves boots and pants And I've actually gotten some good legendary gear from these and some good aspects as well that have rolled from them uh, we can also go to the Cursed Scroll section um, over here, but I want to jump down to the mounts because you can actually get some sweet skins. So here we have some sweet skins that you can get, cosmetic trophies, uh, a saddle bag, wizard standard, you have a Dark Knight's Barding, and so many more. I know, um, you know a lot of people are going to be trying to hunt down the reins of the Bloody Steed, and if you are going to want to farm for that, this is definitely a great way to do so. Go to one lower difficulty than you can do on PvE, and you will most likely have no problems. Um, I hope they do add a level range for PvP, so you know you can't have like level 100s coming into a nightmare difficulty region. But uh, as of now, they don't. You can also spend on curse scrolls of recklessness, curse scrolls of tranquility, and you can also spend on curse scrolls of chaos over here at the scroll vendor. There's a lot of reasons why people are excited about the PvP, and uh, it's just because there is so much more fun to be had than I would have originally thought. You would have thought everything was just busted, and it kind of is, but it still remains fun, and you wouldn't have expected something like that. So before you go out there, do make sure you flag up. I have mine customized to be on my scroll wheel, so I am now blood marked. So now I can actually attack people out in the Fields of Hatred. It does look like that boss was potentially killed, as I don't see him walking around. So there must be somebody out there right now. So let's go out there and see if we can get a quick, uh, quick kill. And if we can, great. If we can't, that's all right, because right now we are at the currency of zero. And do remember, you die, you lose everything. And also remember, if you leave the zone or log out, you lose everything as well. So they don't let you basically play safe and leave. You can go to town, um, but yes, you cannot leave the game or you'll lose all your uh, your all of your hatred 
Um, looks like the boss just spawned back over there. And another big thing to note, guys. Uh, let's kill some of this stuff real quick. Another big thing to note is that this is actually a grim favor reward quite often. So it's really nice to get kind of a two for one when you're doing these. And you can see here the cooldown on potions, eight seconds. So, again, if you're struggling to stay alive in the zone, it'll make for a really hard area to be because of the amount of just basically healing that you can't do anymore. Um, and the nice thing about Rogue is the lifesteal. So I can actually lifesteal back up off of this stuff pretty much without a problem. And here's the Abomination. Um, and you guys might hear my clicks. Sorry about that in the... Uh, in the video, if you do hear my clicks from the PvP when it does go down, if it goes down, uh, hopefully they come over to this boss. But as you can see again, another great thing is that we can kill the boss solo very, very easily. Uh, there's not a problem. I'm not dodging anything. I'm getting hit by all of the abilities and kind of just looking around ready to dash away if somebody comes and kind of reset. One thing as well, if you are a rogue player, I will say you want to save your shadow step for CC so you can get out of it. A lot of these builds that are good in PvP have a lot of CC. So you want to save your shadow step for specifically that. So you can see all the seeds of hatred that have come out of this man and uh, quite a bit. So we have 3,000 from just one kill there. Oh, we have somebody turning in over here. Let's go see if we can stop him. So he's at about halfway right now. And uh, so problem is we're probably not going to be able to stop him. We're not going to be able to kill him in time. And I'm a little weak at the moment, but should be no problem. So he actually stunned me, so I saved my shadow step. And he actually left the area, so he should still have all of his, uh, all of his shards, which would be great for me. There we go. We got him. So we got about 4,000 seeds of hatred there. It was actually fairly close because uh, I wasn't fully prepared and went in there a little weak. But we were able to get him, and there we go. We have the 7,000 Seeds of Hatred now. He was a little underleveled, so I didn't feel too, too good about that one. But that is why I hope that they continue to kind of filter levels at some point and make it so you don't fight against people higher level or lower level. Because even in this difficulty, I fought against people, you know, like I said, 70 plus before. So, in the top right, you can see two things. You can see that I have 10 out of 100. When we get to 100 out of 100, we will be marked on the map, and people will be hunting to kill us for sure. Actually, another kill in the middle if we can try to get to that real quick and see if we can get one more kill before our turn-in. We have 7,700 shards we're risking right now, but uh, looks like we're going to go for it. Here we go. Let's see if we can get to him before he gets this turn-in. I don't know where he went, to be honest. I have no idea where he's at. Oh, here he is. I used my shadow step early. There he is. He's dead. We did kill him very quickly. I put some twisting blades in him with a poison trap and just dashed away. No point in staying there much longer than that. I don't think he got any of the turn-ins in. Maybe he did because he didn't have much on him. Let's start an altar of ourselves. And look, the abomination is back up already. You can see how this would be some great farming and how quickly you can actually roll some of those weapons and some of the gear back at town for 3,000 when right now I'm at 41,000 and I'm turning in 10,000. So that's three different rolls already. Um, very good for a lot of different things. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And uh, I hope you guys try out some PvP yourself. It's a lot of fun. As this guy, unfortunately, level 51 came up to me, and uh, that did not work out for him. But thank you guys again for tuning in, and uh, I'll see you guys all in the next one.